Hi all. Let's see Leela Chess on the white side of the dragon against Laser 1.5. So this is a formatic start position in this game. Bit of trivia for you and technology change. One of the first films I got on VHS and when VHS was popular was Enter the Dragon. It was a delight. Absolute delight. So anyway, we're going to enter a dragon here ourselves. So Leela playing white. Book moves to start off with of the Sicilian dragon. So here, this is the last book move given Queen D2. So Leela Chess playing white is on ID487. It's on a 1080 graphics card. Laser 1.5 is on a 4 core i7-39. Okay, so knight c6, we see g4 from Leela. So it hasn't castled queenside yet, just the immediate g4. This is quite popular in live book. It's but I mean, it casts things more frequent, I believe. So, um, but this is fine. It's not too dangerous to do this. H5 is played. We see now G takes H5, Knight takes H5, and Leela just castles Queenside. Now Black actually gives up that Fianchetto Bishop, which you might think is a little bit odd. But it also reduces a bit white's attacking potential in the short term. After bishop takes, knight takes, queen takes, bishop e6. So what's Lila's plan in this position? You'll note that the h-pawn plan is not going to be as effective here. It's blockaded already on h5. So how could actually white break open the lines? Well, Lila plays a move which does look very logical, queen d2 given the possibility of queen h6. If Fianchetto bishop's gone, it seems logical to try and tap into those dark square weaknesses. This could be a handy move. Queen d2. Uh, we see queen a5. And now, to try and break open the lines, the move f4 is actually played, not minding about a2 here. Uh, let's have a look at bishop takes a2 first. This wasn't played, but this accelerates white's attack. So like this. With f5, it's pretty dangerous for black. It's an example continuation. White's uh, doing well here. And if we look instead at rook ac8, this this continuation it's very similar very similar let's maybe take it a little bit further with an exchange sack white can actually survive this kind of exchange sack potentially and have a small edge in fact here uh, uh, yeah uh, an advantage okay so these lines are not too scary for white involving dropping a2 we see b5 instead so f5, b4. Now here is a really interesting episode. You'd think this is a, a caveman style hack attack game. But Leela takes the time to do a positional maneuver in the midst of this. A little knight dance in the midst of this uh, slaughter on both sides. So both sides seemingly wanted to slaughter each other's kings. But Leela inserts a little dance here of the knight. Instead of playing, you might think, knight d5. But that allows black to simplify. This position is, is only giving a small edge for white. But this is very interesting. And in fact, my own Houdini engine flips to this after a certain depth instead. It's got a certain perk to it. The knight can centralize to d4. And I don't know if this is a new way of playing against the Sicilian dragon to insert this knight dance in the middle of things. Um, but it's it's certainly it's very very interesting uh, if we look at a couple of possibilities here a6 was played kicking that knight to where it seems to want to go but before let's get it before getting into that uh, let's look here at queen takes a2 why well, actually has queen takes b4 here and although this might seem a little bit scary it seems it would favor white massively. For example, here is like winning the queen because it's the end of the queen because a bishop takes f7, 
Queen takes a4 or Queen a1 check King d2 winning the Queen because b2 is covered so that would have to that would be absolutely winning so Queen takes a2 is no good and you might think well okay hang on what about Bishop takes a2 well here Queen h6 and this position Bishop d3 and here this can, this knight doesn't have to even go to d4 rook dg1 and uh, this is just too strong this attack here g7 threatening takes and also queen h8 is too strong it's mate otherwise it's mate on h8 so that's all too strong uh basically the lines involving taking on a2 so we see a6, knight d4. Now, actually, black does take on a2 with the queen. If taking on the bishop, then going in with the queen, this position, knight c6, funny enough, is very useful. So it's not just a beautiful looking knight in the center, it's got a tactical impact here. And even if the queen's come off, Taking on b4 actually wins the bishop. <laughs> the bishop's trapped. Uh, so white has a big advantage there. So, yeah, it's very, very interesting, this knight d4 concept, to have inserted that in. It's a real spanner in the works. Uh, so, and if we look at this line again, instead with rook hc8, instead of queen e5, so that covers the, the knight c6 possibility. It's just too dangerous here. This position is uh, very nice for white. White's just tearing black to shreds on the light squares. Could take on g8, I suspect, but this is more clinical. This is the cl clinical continuation recommended as an example, slaughter line as an example. So it's all pretty dangerous here after knight d4 so queen takes a2 is played we have queen h6 and this seems isn't this a little bit scary you think because the queen, the king's getting kicked out here uh, for a moment and so queen takes b2 the rook was attacking the queen and now c3 is available and if you might think what is this king e3 <laughs> King centralizes. So Leela's knight dance is accompanied by the king on e3 supporting the knight. Clearly that's a really standard plan in the Sicilian dragon. But no, things are reaching dramatic proportions over here. What is black doing about this G file now? And this F5 move. B B3 is played. If Bishop D7, Fg, Fg, check. This is just crashing through. White has a big advantage here. It's crashing through. So b3 is played. Leaving the bishop on e6 for a moment. Bishop d3. <laughs> Taking time. D takes. You know, it just affords this blockade. This position. So bishop d3 is just for blockade. You know, for rook c1. Very comfortable here. Leader's taking her time over things here. Huh? to get a nice blockade, king security, nice position. And now black volunteer, volunteers the piece. If black didn't, uh, then rook takes c2. This position is a uh, very big advantage for white. So black gives the piece. Rook takes c2 though, it's not taken immediately. And in fact, there's a little interlude here tactically bypassing a nasty scenario white plays rook c6 kicking the queen if an immediate e takes f5 so this is an important tactical nuance then e5 f takes rook a e8 is actually an even position apparently so this is an important nuance to kick the queen and the queen goes to b2 and you might think well hold on couldn't black keep the pin with queen a7 so with the same tactical idea so i want to show you that here e takes if the same tactical idea there's a slight difference here 
Bishop takes g6. This position is okay for white. White's actually got a, a big advantage there. Yeah, slight configuration difference, but white's fine there. So, and here, let's look as well at knight f6. <coughs> Not me. Queen h4, king g7. King e2, white has a big advantage there. So, okay. Um, so here, rook c6, queen b2 is played. Knight takes f5 after all that. Knight takes f5. Rook a e8, rook g1, knight g7. We see rook g3 with the possibility of switching over. Queen e5, centralizing the queen, king d2. Uh, this is also setting a big trap. If rook h3, then bang, knight takes f5 check, wins the white queen. So Lila quite wisely <laughs> puts the king on d2 here, away from that. Knight h5, rook g5, knight g7, rook g4, queen b2 check, king d1, check. And now knight takes f5 here, e takes, check, check. Queen h8. Now Lee that refuses the queens for a moment. Queen e3. But here the sides. Okay. Take the queens off. Uh, so Blank's trying to sort of stop being slaughtered basically. But this is a piece down ending. That was check, so the king moved. But it's still a piece down ending with fragmented pawns. So these pawns are not so strong course now this is just clearly winning for white it's a bit of technique here really bishop up bit of technique getting behind the pass pawn tarash rule get behind pass pawns here kicking the rook out okay now this is very favorable so putting that rook on the sub for rook g8 coming up soon because the bishop's now supporting h7 and it was adjudicated here as a win for white white just plays king e2 is going to be easily winning this so i thought that was an interesting uh sicilian dragon from the white side very interesting very memorable i don't remember too many sicilian dragons like this with the knight b5 to d4 and the king coming out to e3 and White being very calm about things, taking the opportunity to connect rooks and blockade instead of quickly win a, winning a piece. Everything under calm control. Very nice game. I thought positional perspective on the Sicilian dragon, basically. Hope you got something from it. Comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciated. Thanks very much.